Hi guys, so I decided to make this recording for today's lesson because some people were absent and um, I think that this is important. You probably can learn it from the book, but a little easier if it's explained to you. Um, so <clears throat> what we talked about today were things related to numbers. Hold on, sorry. <clears throat> so things related to signs that are related to numbers, okay? So just a quick lesson on this. Um, if you are doing numbers that uh, are preceding an item, such as five books, okay, or 16 chairs, all right, so in that case, for the numbers one through five, your hand should face yourself, okay? So if I said one book, it would be one book, all right, or two chairs, two chairs, or three people, three people. See how my hands are facing myself, okay? or four sisters, four sisters. All right, so any numbers that are coming before a noun up through the number five, your hand will face yourself, okay? Now, for the number six on up, your hand will face outward, okay? So if I'm saying six books, then I would say six books. See that? My hand faces out. It does not face myself. It faces out. Six books, okay? 17 people. 17 people. Not 17. 17 people, okay? Hand faces out, all right? Otherwise, your hand will face out for everything. So the only time that a number would face yourself would be if that number is coming before a noun and is the numbers one through five. All right, all other times numbers face out. So that includes a situation where we're talking about time. <clears throat> right, if I said breakfast is at eight, I would not say breakfast is at eight. I would say breakfast is at eight, okay? If I said wake up at six in the morning, I would say wake up at six in the morning. See, hand facing out, wake up at six in the morning, okay? If I said I'm done working at one, I would say, I'm done, that's finished, remember? I'm done working at one, not one, one, facing out. I'm done working at one, okay? So remember, the only time a number faces yourself is one through five when coming before a noun. That's the only time, okay? All other numbers face out, okay? And then we wanna talk about age, okay? So if I were to ask you how old you are, I, in English, I would say, how old are you, right? Okay, in ASL, that's not necessary. All you need are the signs for old and you, okay? So old, you may remember, is it looks like you're grabbing and stroking a long beard, old, okay? So if I wanna ask how old are you, I would sign old and I would point at you and I would have a question on my face. How old are you? How old are you? Okay, so old you, that's all. How old are you? Okay, um, and then when you answer that question, you precede the number of your age by the sign old. And again, you're saving a lot of time. You don't say, I'm 15 years old. You say, me, old 15, me. That's it, okay? Now remember, that incorporates when you use a personal pronoun as the subject, you repeat it again at the end of the sentence. So, me, old 15, me, okay? So, old you, that's the question, old you. The answer is me, old, 15, me, okay? Now that's proper grammar. Some people may just tell me the number, okay? So if I say old you, you might just say old 15, okay? Those are both fine. All right, now let's talk about numbers when it pertains to quantifiers. So don't let the word quantifier scare you. A quantifier just means a numeric adjective, okay? So that would be like, we'll go back to the book example because it's an easy one. So if I were to say five books, five books, okay, five books, the number five is the quantifier. If, or I, maybe I would say many books, many, that's the sign for many. So if I said many books, many books, the word many is the quantifier, okay? So basically it's just a numeric adjective, all right? So what I wanna tell you about quantifiers is that a quantifier can come before or after the noun being modified, okay? So if I said I bought five books, that's how I would say it in English, okay? But in ASL, there are, plenty, there are other ways I could say it. I could say, I bought five books. Or I could say, I bought books, five. Okay, now, what if I said, I have many books? I have many 
books. Or I could say, I have books, many. All right, now we're going to incorporate several grammatical rules here. There are a lot of possibilities. You also might see a deaf person put books at the beginning of the sentence because a lot of times deaf people will use the object first, okay? And then they will give you the subject and action verb, okay? Here's an example, books I bought, okay? Now, if they do that, <clears throat> remember, when you use a personal pronoun, a lot of times the deaf person will repeat the personal pronoun at the end of the sentence. So they might say, books I bought many, me. Okay, or they might say books. Wait a minute, I got a little lost there. Or they might say, I bought many books, me. Okay, um, so don't let that confuse you. I just wanted to show you that when you're talking to a deaf person, you're probably going to see a mixture of grammatical structure and none of that is wrong, okay? And actually, the more that you increase your skill and the more that you spend time with deaf people, you'll find yourself doing the same thing, putting the object at the beginning of the sentence, remembering to pronoun, pronoun, okay? So anyway, that's what quantifiers are. Just wanted to let you know that it is not against the rules to put a quantifier after the noun that it's modifying. Okay, I um, think that's all for today. Just remember that there's a quiz tomorrow over lesson six vocabulary um, and need you to come up with three questions to submit to me that you would like to ask a deaf person. Three questions that you would like to ask a deaf person. It can be anything. All right, see you later. Bye-bye.